At Freedom Mortgage, freedom means helping veterans achieve their home financing goals. Whatever freedom means to you, Freedom Mortgage has custom loan options to meet your needs, making home financing a custom fit. That's freedom. Visit freedommortgage.com forward slash VA to learn more. Freedom Mortgage Corporation, MLS number 2767, www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org, 951 Yamato Road, Boca Raton, Florida, 33431, 800-220-3333. Licensed in all 50 states. For complete licensing information, visit www.freedommortgage.com forward slash state dash licensing. Equal housing opportunity. Streaming only on Peacock. John Wayne Gacy killed 32. Straight from the killer's mouth. They want you to believe that I alone committed these murders. The new gripping six-part documentary series, John Wayne Gacy, Devil in Disguise. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. What's up, everybody, and greetings from Sin City. This morning, we're going to talk about the Panama Papers and how that piece of reporting was directly responsible for over $1.36 billion of money recovered. Now, there is a pretty good movie about this whole entire affair called The Laundromat, and I believe it's on Netflix I highly recommend checking that out if you're interested in the money laundering angle and all of these offshore businesses, etc., etc. Now, we know Epstein was named in those Panama Papers as well. So, let's jump into this article from the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists and let's see just exactly what sort of impact this reporting and then the recovery had. Headline, Panama Papers Revenue Recovery Reaches $1.36 billion As Investigations Continue. Five years after the Panama Papers were first published, authorities are still clawing back lost tax dollars and prosecuting wrongdoers exposed by the global investigation. This article was authored by Sean McGooey. And the Panama Papers, when when this first happened, it rocked everything. When these paper, when this, when this leak first happened, and all of this was being reported, it was shocking to a lot of people to see the contents that were within the Paradise, uh, the Panama Papers. It's uh, pretty crazy how long the so-called elite have been up to their games. Governments around the world have now recouped more than $1.36 billion in back taxes and penalties as a direct result of the Panama Papers, including $185 million in newly reported recoveries over the past two years. So again, that's what you call impactful reporting, right? That's investigative journalist in my opinion, journalism in my opinion. When you dive deep into a subject like this, a topic like this, And you go all the way looking for the truth. And that's exactly what we saw with the Paradise Papers, the Panama Papers, the FinCEN leaks. This is really good, tough, journalistic work. And there is a serious lack of that, in my opinion, not only in America, but in most Western countries. Five years after the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists led a worldwide investigation exposing the secrets of the offshore finance industry, 24 countries have reported official recoveries with hundreds more proceedings still ongoing. Now, you know a lot of these these countries wouldn't have done anything without without this investigation and this news becoming public. What, you think these countries didn't know that this kind of thing was occurring? These countries certainly didn't need this report to come out for them to know that this was happening. The report coming out is what spurred them into action, perhaps, but it always cracks me up when they act like they had no idea what was occurring. It's rampant in the financial sector. All of this offshore shit is highly suspect to me, okay? Sorry, point blank period. I might be way off there, right? Look, I'm I'm sure there are some people who 
use offshore uh, banking for whatever purpose it was created for, right? Save you a couple bucks, whatever it is. But the reality of the situation is it seems like a vast majority of money that's being moved offshore uh, at shops like the one Epstein had down there is for dark and devious purposes. Along with journalists from 100 media partners all over the globe, ICIJ examined over 11.5 million secret documents from the Panamanian law firm Mossack Fonseca. The files, which were leaked to the German newspaper Süddeutsche Zeitung, exposed a worldwide web of offshore shell companies that Mossack Fonseca set up for a list of clients, including heads of state, business executives, and star athletes. So, basically, what happened here in uh, the the short version is um, Mossack Fonseca was the law firm that facilitated all of this for these people. They went through them, and then Mossack and Fonseca were in charge of making sure everything went smoothly and went correctly. So, again, that movie, The Laundromat, I was just talking about, goes into Mossack and and Fonseca and, and dives into this topic pretty thoroughly. So, um, I think it's Gary Oldman who's in it, a couple of other famous people, but definitely worth the watch if you're interested in this line of thinking and you're interested in learning a little bit more, um, about the Panama Papers and what they were and what the impact was. That movie is a pretty good, uh, dip your toe in the water kind of content. Since April 2019... Australia has added close to 45 million to its total, which now sits at 138 million. Italy has reported recouping an additional 31.8 million since 2019, nearly doubling its total to 65.5 million. And in February 2021, the Norwegian Tax Administration reported for the first time to ICIJ's media partner that it had been able to recover nearly $34 million. So again, when you have good, hard-charging journalists, good people who want to expose the truth no matter what, this is the result. You get a good quality piece of work, investigative work, by several different investigative journalists and outlets, and when that work is put out there for the public to see, and then it moves the needle like this, That's how you can tell when an investigative piece is really on point and that it really resonates. With its new findings, Australia becomes the fifth country to have officially reported more than $100 million in revenue recouped after the Panama Papers revelations. So you mean to tell me that Australia needed the journalists and the ICIJ to drop this story before they had any idea what was going on? Or... Was Australia kicked into motion because they were embarrassed that this shit was exposed? I'm going to go with option two, like the rest of the, the nations in the Western world. The United Kingdom has recovered $252.8 million. Germany has reclaimed $195.7 million, 12, $12.5 million new since 2019. Spain has recovered $166.5 million, and France has recouped more than $142.3 million. Now remember, all of that money, that money would have been gone, lost to time, lost in the wind, instead of those tax dollars coming in for those dollars, hopefully, to be used on the populace of these countries, right? More social programs, helping people eat, whatever it is. The money that was supposed to go to these governments was being pilfered with the help of Mossack Fonseca and this offshore scam that all of these so-called elites really love to tango with. A conservative count. In the wake of the Panama Papers, more than 80 nations announced investigations that could lead to recovered money, criminal charges, or other consequences. But ICIJ's total counts only the recovered funds that we can verify through official responses from governments. So basically, they only, they're only um, 
adding to the total count the stuff that they have seen receipts for, right? You know, governments can give lip service all they want, but unless you have the receipts and the transaction history to back those assertions up, it's really, you know, it's it, it means nothing. So I think it's good that they're going with the uh, the receipts situation here and making sure that they're verifying everything because they've done that throughout this whole investigation and it has been one of the better investigations I have ever seen. You add this with the Finson files, the uh, Paradise Papers, the, Lu- the Luanda leaks, and we're talking WikiLeaks level of good quality bringing the information to the people type of work. Many nations chose not to publicize the amount of money that has been recovered or comment on ongoing investigations at all. In 2017, Asahai Shimbum reported via an anonymous source that the Japanese tax agency had collected over 3 billion yen, about 27 million in relation to the Panama Papers. But since the government does not publicly comment on specific cases, we have no way to verify that figure and include it in our account. So according to um, As- Asahi Shimbun, I guess that's a newspaper in Japan or something, I don't know. Uh, they, re- they say that about $27 million has been recovered in their nation via the Panama Papers leaks. But the ICIJ can't confirm that independently because the government doesn't discuss that sort of thing in Japan. Meanwhile, others report on money that has been assessed or claimed as opposed to money that has been paid. Canada's tax agency has assessed over $16 million in taxes and fines, but did not provide a figure for money that has been recouped by the government. Finland has estimated that it, ha- that it has recovered over 1 million euros, about $1.2 million, as a result of the investigation but was not able to confirm the exact amount. That's weird. How can't you confirm the exact amount? If the government went after this money and they recouped it and they took it back, shouldn't there be an accounting of that? I find that to be a bit strange. I mean, you would think that especially um, a country like Finland would definitely have the receipts and have um, a money trail, right, of how they recouped this money. So that whole, that's kind of odd, that whole statement there to me. Additionally, media partners in Belgium and Denmark provided ICIJ with new information in 2021 that outlines the distinction between money claimed and money recovered. So, we have revised our numbers in those countries to accurately reflect money that has been received by the government, which is why the numbers in those countries are lower than previously reported. Both governments have also claimed additional taxes and penalties that have not been recovered yet. Now, I think that it would be a good idea if the legacy media would take a little bit of a page out of the book from the ICIJ here when it comes to Epstein. Imagine if the legacy media was charging as hard as the, the ICIJ was to get the, the leaks going here. Imagine if the legacy media had that much interest in the Epstein case, how much we would learn, how much would be brought to the table as far as information because there is so much more out there than we even know, folks. So much more out there. The guy had ties to everybody. And he had his fingers deep here in the Panama Papers as well. And there are still more countries where the response has been muted. According to ICIJ, IJ's Hungarian partners, Andris Petho, When the Panama Papers story broke, Prime Minister Viktor Orban and other senior government officials made statements promising to investigate the Hungarian revelation. But those inquiries did not lead to results. Of course they didn't. It was probably uh, Orban's friends, right? Or associates or somebody who was close to him in the government or whatever. And they were like, yeah, we'll conveniently forget about this. And that's certainly something that governments do and have been doing for a very, very long time. Anyone who doesn't think that these governments are in on the grift, not the government itself, right? You know, I'm not saying that they sit around, uh, you know, that's the the message that's sent out by the person, the government, but the people who are working for the government. All these people are corrupt. All of these people are in on it, it seems like. 
And then it becomes, well, who can you trust? Not the Justice Department, not the Bureau of Prisons, not Congress, not Senate, not the President. So it really comes down to a lack of trust in the institutions of the nation. That's the point that we're at right now. And I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. It's everybody has has distrust of these institutions that are supposed to be unassailable. The tax authority launched investigations into two cases. We revealed, but these inquiries were closed without indicting anyone, Petho said. There have been no announcements of any other Panama Papers related investigations, let alone money recovered. Yeah, my guess is someone in Hungary or someone's in Hungary. Yeah, they pocketed all that though and no one's ever going to see it again. I'm, I don't really know the system in Hungary, right? Their financial system. I don't know how any of that works over there. I'm guessing that um, it's pretty similar to whatever the EU has going on. But no matter where you go, whatever country you go to on this planet, you're going to have dirty ass corrupt politicians and scummy ass lifetime bureaucrats that are only interested in enriching themselves. Measuring more than money. The impact of the Panama Papers extends far beyond recovering lost tax revenue. Authorities in multiple countries are continuing to pursue civil and criminal cases over alleged money laundering, fraud, and other allegations. About time. I mean, so are these money launderers just going to be able to do whatever they want for however long they want? Because it's rather apparent that all of these MFs are engaging in this. And nobody ever gets slapped with criminal penalties, right? So hearing that some of these countries are going that route is a good thing in my opinion. You should be held liable and criminally accountable if what you were engaging in falls under that part of the law, right? If you're engaging in money laundering and you're helping steer money and you work at Oh, I don't know. Let's say Goldman Sachs. Well, I, the Goldman Sachs should have to pay a fine, but you, the person who facilitated those deals, you should be criminal res criminally responsible. In Argentina, according to reporting by ICIJ members Mariel Fitzpatrick and Ivan Ruiz, the brothers of former, former President Mauricio Macri, are on trial for money laundering after failing to declare $4 million in a Swiss account held in the name of an offshore company found in the Panama Papers. Oh, that's a shock, huh? An offshore company where they were uh, squirreling away a couple of bucks so they didn't have to pay taxes on it? Nobody's ever tried that scam before. A request dismissal has been rejected by a federal judge, and Argentina's tax agency has successfully requested to be listed as a complaint because the Macri's actions constituted aggravated evasion of taxes. And in a place like Argentina, you know they're coming for every last dime. You better be ready to pay up. In France, ICIJ partners Maxime Valdano and Jeremy Baruch report that as of January 2021, in addition to hundreds of ongoing proceedings conducted by the tax agency, the office of the French financial prosecutor was still pursuing 15 investigations that could potentially result in jail time. So, looks like France is taking it a bit seriously, huh? 15 separate investigations that could result in jail time? Boy, that would really set the tone. In Malta, the revelations in the Panama Papers formed part of an investigation into Keith Shembri, chief of staff to former Prime Minister Joseph Muscat. Shembri, who resigned in November 2009 after being questioned during an investigation into the, into the 2007 murder of investigative reporter Daphne Caruna Galizia, he was released without charge, was charged in March 2021 with money laundering, corruption, fraud and forgery in relation to his secret offshore holdings. It's obviously a quality guy, right? I mean, you know, Mr. Uh, Shembri here, held in relation to Daphne Carauna Galizia, her, her death, 
Ah, nothing to see here, folks. Just got another quality pillar of the community. Chances are this guy will just he'll he'll get off as well. He won't end up facing uh, real serious jail time, is my guess. I mean, I hope he does. All of these scumbags should, but I'm not too confident considering how things have been handled in the past. And although the United States has not officially reported recovering any back taxes as a result of the Panama Papers, accountant Richard Gaffey, the first American charged in connection to the investigation, pleaded guilty to crimes including conspiracy to commit tax evasion and defraud the United States, and was sentenced in September 2020 to over three years in prison. Well, that's good, right? Somebody went to prison at least, and I'm glad to see it was here in America. I want to set the tone. I want to set the tone in America with these bankers and these uh, lawyers and everybody that's involved in this in this hustle. I want all of them to receive serious stiff penalties, be disbarred, all of it. Where did the one point three six billion come from? These countries have either publicly announced they recouped money from the Panama Papers or have reported the amount to ICIJ's media partners and are included in the ICIJ's 1.36 billion figure. Country number one, United Kingdom. The amount recovered, 252.76 million. million. Germany, number two, 195.65 million. Spain, a cool 166.49 million. France, 142.29 million. Australia, 137.65 million. Colombia, 88.88 million. And for a a country like Colombia, that's big dough, folks. That's a lot of money for them to, to get back from tax evasion and to hopefully pump back into the country. Ecuador, 84.3 million. Italy, 65.49 million. Czech Republic, 36.46 million. And finally, oh, excuse me, number 10, Norway, 33.83 million. Iceland, 25.53 million. Mexico, 21.57 million. Denmark, 21.36 million. Sweden, 19.3 million. Belgium, 18.53 million. Malta, 16.47 million. Netherlands, 16.39 16.39 million. Panama, 14 million. Austria, 2.7 million. Luxembourg, 2.3. Slovenia, 1 million. Uruguay, Uruguay, 1 million. New Zealand, 410,000. Lithuania, 358,000. So, folks, those are all the countries that have recovered money from the Panama Papers. 24 in total so far. And it just goes to show you that when good investigative journalist, journalism happens, these are the results. So we'll, we're going to continue to follow this, the, the whole money laundering angle, because this is very big in regards to the Epstein case. Now remember, he had ties to Mossack and Fonseca as well. So very loose ties, obviously, but Epstein was definitely smack dab in the middle of this offshore fiasco. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I will be back later on, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Locals know the dispensary has all the best cannabis brands and prices in town. With locations in Vegas and Henderson open seven days a week, you'll never have far to go for the hookup. Great cannabis at the best price. 
kind of our thing. Keep that in reach of children for use only by adults 21 years of age and older. Introducing Peacock, the new free streaming service from NBC Universal. It's hit movies, current shows, live sports, trending bits, and timeless hits. And that's why you can't not watch. Peacock, watch for free, upgrade for more. Stream now at PeacockTV.com. Law and Order SVU streaming now.